Hello everybody and welcome back to the King Fox channel. My name is Matt Conniger and I'm building a Kit Fox Model 7 STI. In this video, well I've put in the put in the rudder pedals uh, in the last video and I've been spreading some Christmas cheer and traveling so I do apologize for the lack of a video the last Monday. Um, but I'm going to be getting back into it now and I'm going to be putting in the, the floorboards using my riv nuts. I know some guys have said not to use riv nuts and to use the the clips instead that slide over the tabs and you, you drill through them, but I've already ordered the rib nuts. I want to play with them and I'm going to put them in. So let's get into the video and I'll be putting in the floorboards and hopefully moving on from there. So let's go. So some of you might be asking, what is a rib nut? Like I did. Well, that's a rib nut. And uh, what does it do? Well, it's got some threads in it. So you drill a hole, you slide that thing through the hole, you put your bolt in there, which I've got here. I've got a, a little combo of a, I've got a rib nut on there right now, but I'll just take it off so you can see. It's basically like a, a rivet and a nut. So threaded, threaded rod, or in this case a bolt, put it into the rib nut. And I'm gonna use a, I got a lock washer on here and a flat washer and then this collet, this threaded, it's basically a huge nut, so I got it a little bit longer because the threads are very fine and I wanted to spread the strain of squeezing this rib nut over more threads than just a little tiny nut because for this small of a nut all I could find, were, or this small of a bolt all I could find were these little tiny nuts and it only touches about three or four threads so I thought if I could touch 10 to 15 threads I'd have less chance of stripping this out. Basically I'm using this, this is my application tool to install those. So I'm gonna do a, a test run and try to capture that on camera. All right, so you guys might recognize this. This is one of my old uh, torque tubes. So for this specific rib nut, it said that the minimum drilling size, the minimum hole drilling size is six millimeters. And this is a six mil bit. This hole is just a little bit too large, but I'm going to try to put one of these in the hole on here and crimp it down and see how that works. So there's a rib nut on my application tool. So I'm gonna need two wrenches. Seven millimeters seems to do the trick. Funny I have a seven millimeter socket but not a seven millimeter wrench. When in doubt, grab the crescent wrench. All right, insert the rib nut in the hole. I'm gonna hold this top or the nut closest to the rib nut and tighten the, the bolt down. Maybe, maybe not. First I'm gonna tighten this top nut down onto the rib nut, which is spinning, so therefore it's not tightening. There, lock nut's engaged. Hopefully it'll work now. So I think I'm gonna hold that down tight against the metal piece and begin to tighten and see what happens. Nothing is happening because Something is turning. Okay, I pulled the lock washer out just here because it was a little bit lopsided and the rib nut kept spinning on here. So we'll, everything's flush now. I'm gonna give it another go. All right, new setup. Apparently these nuts are supposed to be able to slide up and down, basically a spanner setup. So I'm gonna give it another go, see if I can get it to work. So I think I'm gonna bring this all the way up to the top, and the idea is to tighten this one and hold these. So I'll see if I can get these all lined up so that I can hold them. All right, I'm getting quite a bit of resistance, so I'm gonna take the crescent off, take a look at what we've got. Looks like the edge has started to swell there. I'm not sure if you can see that at all. So we will try to move the camera. Well, the edge is definitely swelling. I'm gonna see if I can take this top bolt out and see if it holds. Okay, I cannot, so I either need to keep going or stop. I think I'm gonna keep going. And I'm going to get something a little bit larger to hold all these nuts. I have a feeling that I'm bending this 
this bolt because it looks like it's now touching this side of the hole. So I assume that the threads on this are catching on the bolt. This probably isn't the best tool. have one hole in here and I can't put one in the other side because it's awkward to clamp so I'm gonna I'm gonna drill another hole in this and try to put another one in so let's see if I can make this hole I'll be using this cheap drill bits that I got off Amazon that were the metric metric drill bits I'll see if they'll even drill a hole in this steel here if they don't I might just put them in the metal recycle bag aka the garbage Okay, I'm getting nowhere fast. As we can see that I've done nothing but let the drill bit walk across the material. So now let's get a real drill bit and see what the difference is. This is a six millimeter. I'm gonna go with a 13 64ths. At least it's working. Continuing where we left off. That was easy. Is the hole big enough for the rivnut? Let's see. Nope. So, I think before I did mean 15 64ths, and I used the wrong one. So, we're going with 15 64ths. And 15 64ths is not big enough. So now we'll go with one quarter. This quarter inch do it? Yes, little on the big side. And got a, a mini V drill guide from Big Gator Tools that I purchased for not this type of procedure, but I'm gonna use that as my slide because that bolt slides through there nicely. I'm gonna put the riv nut on the end of it and see if this application will work. If it does, then I'll try to get a little bit of a shorter bolt and a, a collar that fits over the top of the, the bolt, but it'll slide up and down and it's um, smooth on the inside so that it'll, it'll allow me to drill this tight and crimp the riv nut. But again, I'm just conducting a test, so we'll see how this works or if it does work. All right, my probably 15th setup. So I've got this little little bolt that goes to a number three metric nail and wrench, and I've got a 7 16 nut on there, which slides over the top of the bolt that I'm using. So I'm gonna attempt to tighten this rib nut in again, just by hand see if this will work. Apparently not. So it is, it looks like it pushed the riv nut into the nut. I will try one other method. Good thing I have 50 of these riv nuts. Or had. So now I have bolt, washer, nut, additional washer to keep the head of the riv nut from going into the nut that's on top of it. All right, I've got it hand tight. I'm gonna put it in there and we'll try it one more time. It's starting to crimp. I can tell because it is not moving and I'm seeing a slight crimp on the outside there. The question is how much torque to give it before I twist the head of the bolt off, which is what I do not want to do. So I'm gonna take the bolt out I see that it's turning wonkily, so that means I've bent something. Well, one, I bent that washer for sure, and bent the bolt, and I appeared to have I've attached this washer now to this bolt. Can I hand start that? Yes, I can. Is it crimped on there? Yes. Do I like it? Doesn't seem like a real good way to go. Seems like I should probably use the appropriate tool for this since Maybe due to the size of these riv nuts, it's too difficult to get a good to get good pressure on it, keep it straight. I'm not happy with the results of this. That's probably why everyone else said they use those clips. That is not pretty.
install the pedal assembly into the aircraft using the hardware shown, torque the nuts to 20 to 25 inch pounds. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, Co-pilot side of the aircraft, the farthest one aft, and it's gonna be pretty neat trying to torque when I can't see the scale myself. So looks like it's 10 and 20 for the first two parameters, which I should be able to see easily. You guys just tell me when I'm there. How about that? If I can get on the nut, that would be very helpful. There it is. Heck, let's zoom in a little bit. Guess we can't. Ten. Twenty. Right there. Okay. I'm gonna have to play that video back for myself to make sure that that's actually where I was. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. I'll have to come down there with you. My torque wrench is only the quarter inch shank. I have to do a quarter inch onto one of these chucked drill bits, which goes into three eighths. So I can use this socket, which has a little thinner wall, so I can actually get it on the nut. But I still can't quite get on the nut. So it's gonna make it hard to torque. Ten, twenty, so a little bit extra. Ten. Right at twenty. Moving on. Bit of a non-standard camera angle here, but gotta do it so I can get all these special measurements recorded. Ten, twenty. Ten, and twenty. It's nice that there's a Phillips head up here to have to hold on to also. That makes it easier. Ten, twenty, looks like about twenty-five. Moving over to the pilot side, the inboard pedal. 10, 20. Whoops. Oh, yeah, 20. 10, 20. Now the outboard on the pilot side. So we'll do the aft one first because, because I can get the ratchet on there, maybe. Try it without that. Nope. That's great. Alright, the old uh, sander definitely didn't like being operated in the vertical position, so I had to bring it down here and set it on the floor and flatten those washers out a little bit. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. For a collagen break. C-O-L-L-A-G-E-N. Pure collagen. Since I'm laying on a bed of styrofoam. Keeps the joints nimble. I think what I'll attempt to do now is put a Phillips head on the torque wrench, hold this nut on the bottom, and try to torque it from up above. But right after I put this nut and washer on, considerably shorter than all the others for some reason. Certainly I didn't grab the same screw from the center console. I would never do that. I 
is the same length. It's looking better. Okay, she's tight. Apparently it's turning more. See. Mm-hmm. You ready? Ten, twenty pounds. Aft. Ten, twenty pounds. Least All right, that was a lot of fun. I brought my helper out to the garage to uh, hold down the the nuts on the bottom while I tried to put the torque conglomeration together on the top. So I ended up using the socket set into a 3 8 and then into a Phillips and I was able to put that in the using a quarter inch socket. Get that all together and, and uh, torque up the Phillips head instead of down below because I can't get that nut to turn down there. So, so I got it. So those are all torqued so I'm going to sign the book off. The only thing I can see is down here I can see a little bit of a depression where that's screwed down. So I'm assuming that this is higher than the center bracket over here. So I'm gonna take those two screws out and the nuts off, and I'm gonna put a washer underneath this aluminum bracket between the pedal, or between the floorboard, the bracket, and then, and then put those two back on and see if that makes these pedals move easier. Because I think that should move as easily as this one.